Right, so in that spirit now of kind of loosening up and everything, we've got everything ready. Um, <clears throat> and now it's time to fully focus and really steady yourself. Not in a harsh, kind of rigid, let's get down to business way, but in a kind of, just be attentive to the present moment, what's there in front of you just now, that's all. Um, <clears throat> and my, my instinct first is to go with the shadows on the face here, to see if I can find a colour that will best represent those. I'm using the cadmium red, just like yesterday, with the sap green. So that's the sap green there. When I mix those two together, I find that it gets me there fairly quickly to, to get a colour that will be good enough for now to explain the shadows on the shadow side of the skin. It looks something like that. If you wanted to warm it up a bit, or if you've got a really good knowledge of colour and you know that something else will work equally easily and quickly for you, by all means do that. Um, <coughs> but if um, I'm worried that I'm turning that way now because most people are over there. But anyway, I turn to you occasionally. So, um, so there's the yellow ochre you could put in. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put some yellow ochre in there in order to give it a bit more warmth as it comes into the light. This is the skin of the forehead coming across the face. So using the two inch brush, you can begin where the hair meets the face quite easily by just placing the brush down and then pulling it across. And then there's a slight change of direction down for the where where the um, where the face comes to the cheekbone, you know, where that line meets the cheekbone and then it'll be back in like this. And lines that overshoot, that wasn't deliberate. Lines that overshoot are okay, if you know that. It's not the end of the world. In fact it adds to I know that in drawing people say that lines that overshoot are kind of welcome because it just gives you the feeling that things are all possible, that it's all to play for. I don't know. I like to see the evidence of the drawing underneath. So I need to just mix a little bit more. Mix a bit more of the... Um, <coughs> of the red and green. And I'm just finding my way, creating a bit of order here, you know, seeking to explain in as summary and succinct and economic a way as possible what I've just seen. And that's why the two inch brush is really handy because it gets you there faster. You can explain the side of the face by printing three times the change of angle and then filling it in. So um, less is more at this stage so that you can move swiftly around and begin to make, um, make sense of what's happening in front of you. Okay. And I think now is a good time to maybe place the uh, shadow where the, where the eye socket meets the nose. If you put a colour down like that and you feel like it's come across too far, don't worry, I would just print it off just to give the possibility of it being a little further that way. I wasn't sure. And if it's dry and you have to move it, that's that's possible too, you know, if the paint dries and you need to move the edge, it's possible to do that with these craft brushes that you can just lift off nice and easily. And I'm going to do this to soften this edge here, so where the eye socket meets the cheek, you kind of want it to undulate more than to be a harsh edge, so I'm using the one inch craft brush here to lift off um, the light that's on the cheekbone and also just to stop the the edge reading is sharp on this side. Quite happy for there to be a clear angle here to just describe the eye mask. <coughs> okay, and then the next thing I think might be to locate something for the underside of the nose, not really painting the nose, but just deciding roughly where it is to be planted between the eyebrow and the chin. And in the same way that you might do something similar for the shadow that's underneath the mouth there. I put the nose too far over, haven't I? Let's see. I might go there, or maybe there's a steeper slope. You can kind of see things as you as you work. You, other things will be revealed to you that might need to be adjusted. And you know, for now, it's good enough. It's good enough for now. Okay. Maybe I'll just put some of that lovely shimmery waistcoat in. Some kind of a colour. That would be um, waistcoat colour. I'm going to just do a job on the ceiling in the evening after I'm finished today because there's three days worth of splashes on the ceiling. <laughs> and then we might as well do it all in a winter. 
Jim, you're really good at cleaning up, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> right, so I'm going to find something now that will make um, the dark of the uh, shirt underneath the waistcoat there. That's a nice clear triangle shape that will maybe connect the two and I don't know, it just feels like a good place to go next. Absolutely, ask away if there's so anything. So why did you not do, why are you not doing the other side edge of the face? Why did you only do half? I, I could feel myself getting all kind of worried about it actually. I could feel the tension coming into my arm and I thought this isn't what this is about. We're to have a bit of fun and colour is something that makes you feel light and you know and I thought that's a lovely shimmery colour down there so I drew away from the face knowing that I can come back up to it. But I think any time that you feel effort or tension or trying hard or oh god it's not going to work or something, any time there's a tiny hint of fear coming in, just abandon ship there, leave that alone and do something somewhere different and that'll just, um, that, that'll sort it all out. So that's why, good question. <clears throat> Let's see, so the, I'm finding now the edge of the, yeah, so it looks to me like the length of the length of the top here isn't far off the length of the face, so I know how long I want it to go before it, it comes down to the V shape there. <clears throat> and uh, probably helpful to locate that line relating it to the side of the face, so I know it's about an inch to the left of the side of the face as I'm looking at it, Doc. And then I can bring it up around the neck. So anything that kind of undulates around will uh, make the neck read as though it's got a, it's three dimensional, you know. Just put a bit more tone in there. Make it a bit darker. So when the page is already wet, it's a great opportunity then to drop in some more thick colour. You, sometimes you really need to agitate the paint in order to get enough. If you want it to be like an inky consistency, <coughs> to really work at it, you know. So take your time mixing and take your time setting yourself up to make the mark so that you can fully commit to the mark then. You've got everything set up, steady yourself and do it. And then um, there's great joy in that. <coughs> but the thing about this is that I was wanting to show you how when it's already wet, placing the dark in will allow it to have much more intensity then. And there's something nice about letting the water paint it a bit. You feel like you've got a companion, that you're not on your own, just uh, directing everything. And of course, there'd be the shoulder over there somewhere. I'm not sure where, so I don't have to decide where. <coughs> and something there as well. And some hair. That's all he needs. Well, it's not for us, no, it's alright. It's just to kind of get an indication of the direction. Maybe making it a different colour to the top is a good idea, so I'm putting more of the Van Dyke brown into that tone to keep it equally, equally dark, I guess, but just for it not to be the same colour as the shirt is. And while I've got the paint on the brush, I think I will outline the other side of the forehead with the edge of the hairline in a fairly sporadic way. I'm not, I'm not convinced I know exactly where it is now, but I just want to begin introducing it so that I can hone it and figure out where it is. Um, and I'm looking at the V of hair in front of the ear there and kind of figuring out the width of the face in relationship to that and the ear that will be beyond it. Um, and when you're not deciding on something, just break it into the space around it and leave it possible for there to be a decision made later on. <coughs> I didn't really want it shooting off the top of his head there so much though. <coughs> okay. Yeah, and I'll go back now to do the other eye socket, just to feel my way into that lovely face. We've got lots of lovely bumps and hollows here with the light being revealed. <coughs> yeah, so the light explains the bits that are protruding, obviously. And when you get the darks and the lights by half closing your eyes, if you find the darks and the lights without even considering that there's a lovely face underneath all of this, if you just look for the darks and the light shapes, you'll manage to um, you'll manage to create on here the landscape of this face. Right. I'm just trying to make the colour that will be the shadow of the eye socket on the other side. I don't want to go too dark actually. Maybe a bit darker than that though. So we'll just go for the cadmium red and the sap green again. You know there are a lot of other ways of making a skin colour that's dark. You could use the blue and um, blue and orange, cerulean blue. And 
Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's the end of the demonstration. Is it? <laughs> Thank you. Can I keep going? To, yeah. So the camera let it roll for another little way. Okay, I'll just take another minute to properly finish up. Sorry. Okay. Um, so what I've done there is just made a colour that will represent something a bit darker for the other eye socket, darker than I had previously. Um, and then <clears throat> using the brush this way allows the paint to run more freely. And really one of the main parts to find, I think, is a bit where the shadow of the eye socket meets the nose, because that locates for you where the nose is going to be. That's the main reason in doing those, those shadows in the eye area. The other reason is to create a landscape within which the eye will sit. So make sure you leave enough space. Very often we make the socket of the eye too small a shape this way. You know, and notice what shape it is. It's almost, it's not far off a square really. Um, yeah, and that, that would be something I'd encourage you to look at, is to, to see if you can manage to find geometric shapes in the model, in the shapes of the shadows. You'll be able to kind of say whether it's a, a rectangle, is there a triangle here? And then you can compare one to the other and it makes it simplifies it down for you. So onwards and upwards now, we're all going to have a go at painting duck. And uh, best of luck. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.